Ha! Back! Just in time! Alright. Julia Ruzzi on the right. May Vi... May Y... Ren... Vivian... Kong... On the left. I think I got at least three of those, right? And... Um, here we go. Kong in a very stable, stable stance. You don't see it a lot. She's, every movement is very deliberate. Whereas normally you see fences with a lot more flow to them. Pardon me while I put my jacket on. David King is, oh my God. I thank you guys for tuning in to help me support not listening to David King. Ja, Kong's so good at that is 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 really just a fun new thing I think I haven't noticed before. It's full commitment. And then, but only for as long as she's going. She's so fast over such a short distance where she's intentionally uh, picking the distance. And it's so good. I don't see a lot of fences do that. Normally, if they go fast, they go far. If they go short, you can see that they're that they're um, they're not fully committed to it. But she pulled. I'm still talking about the first touch, thirty seconds. There, she pulled Ritzi into a full fledged uh, counter flesh without, and then just because of how committed she made that first step look, while still being totally ready to step back and take a counter parry. It was phenomenal. Now we slow down a little bit. You can see being a little bit cheeky. I don't think she ever had any intention of doing anything with that. Because it may be interrupting uh, an attack forward, kind of like that one. Ties it up. You've been told it's poor form to fall asleep while working. Uh, yeah, but don't let that stop you. Here we go, 15 seconds left, pushing in. What do we got? Ritzy. I think just at all costs has to not not commit to anything really. I think she's just gotta take whatever whatever short range uh, low commitment target she can. Because if she tries to overcommit to something, it's always gonna be just the wrong timing for it. And uh, Kong has been waiting for Ritzy to come in 
and she needs to uh, go be able to go get a couple of touches at least to force Ritsi to come in it and so she can get back to her game. Uh, going back to a previous comment about the video at the end of the last bout. Um, the ref didn't give it to him because he knew it wouldn't do anything. Uh, that is not a thing a ref can do. Um, although he could say, I'm not going to give it to you, so don't ask for it. And then at that point, it would be up to the smart hand sister, not... Uh, which is my guess for what happened as I think about it. And here we go. Ritsu slowly walking Kong down the strip. And we get to non-combativity. And Kong, number one in the world, is uh, has priority here. I don't know where Ritsu falls, but... That's the men. Oh, Ritsu's 36 in the world. Kong gets a scrappy little one there. Gonna call Pasuke and David King saying a sentence. Shouldn't take a minute to say a sentence. Long range commitment from Ritsi. Uh, tries it again a little bit closer. Uh, a good pair to post from Kong. And a good, good two lead, good two touch lead for, for Kong. I swear I had some coffee before this. And this is more awake than I would be otherwise. There you go. Pokes to the wrist, pokes to the wrist. Oh, that was a good opportunity there. Ooh, see, that's that's what we, she needs. She needs to to re, to reset there because uh, oh, and she misses it over the back. Oh, that was so close. That was such a good touch. Almost such a good touch by Ritsi. Needs to needs to let Kong come to her, and uh, when in doubt, bail out and reset because Kong's always ready for a late parry when when Ritsi comes in. Good parry there, a bit of a, got tangled up on the post, but um, good opportunity again. And again, it's one where Kong is coming in and at Ritsi. Long range, high commitment, but long range and not really something that, that Kong has been punishing. And there's an opportunity by Ritsi to punish the, uh, to punish Kong's, Kong's attempt. But once again, Ritsi overcommits uh, Kong is less committed than she looks like and gets the parry or post. Really, really powerful weapon for her, that, that fake commitment. I don't even think Ritz is thinking it, she's just reacting reacting to the to the opportunity that would be there for approximately everybody else in the world. Here we go, 6-2, end of the second. Um, Couple of touches that could have gone the other way. This bout's a little bit closer than it looks, uh, but definitely would be at least a five three or five four for Kong, and she's definitely in the driver's seat. <sighs> Kong has got to got to play her game. She's got her, her comfortable lead now that we talked about in the last period. And she needs to just just work it. Really hammer it. Hammer the the uh, the the draw that she has to um to draw Ritsi in. Ritsi needs to find a way to get around that at this point because she can't she can't rely on Kong coming at her anymore with a four point lead. Zooming in on, ah, little kitties.
come back uh, in that second period. A lot of technical issues. One of the one of the men's bouts in the the sixteen or the eight had to be moved to a different strip. Here we have a mysterious additional score for Rizzi. Maybe his remote broke and that's why. Ooh, good one there. Now waiting for, for Conk to commit to anything. Um, where did she get her third touch? I could have sworn she ended the second period with two. Seven, sixteen, six, five, four. Yeah, ends a period with two. And then, oh, yeah. And then she just gets a point at the end, beginning of the third. And they leave it to her. What is going on? How did she just get a, a point at the end of the second break? Good just there from Kong to go up to nine. It's it. It looks like this isn't going to matter. But holy cow, I cannot believe that just happened. Anyway, Ritzi's third touch, which is recorded as her fourth touch, was really good um, because she wasn't waiting for Kong to, to commit to anything. She went out and forced it. I don't know, they made the whole, there was like a whole talk about how she should have been at two, not three, and then they just left it. I'm so confused. Oh, a word from somebody there is that they forgot to put on the second red. The P red, not the second red, the P red. Oh, uh, okay, that makes sense. I mean, I don't know if that makes sense. I'll have to go back and look it. Good for Ritchie to get her fifth once again. Uh, not waiting for the, for the commitment from Kong, but attacking in prep anyway. There's no time limit for, for calling for video. You can just do it right away. Oh, good Ritzy to not, not jump in there. But once again, Kong much less committed than she looks. Managed to, to have it both ways. She would have gotten that touch going backwards or standing still. Ritzy really needs to reset there just because she needs to just give up on trying to get those touches. Um, because Kong is too good at them. And there's another good one from Ritzy. That low commitment stuff that we've been talking about.
Good. Hold the parry. Not fall for Kong's, Kong's commitment. Kong tries to go down. Ritzy's ready for the second parry, and then she can score. Really, really good adjustment there. Uh, but uh, you know what? No, that was good. That's what she needs to do. It didn't work out that time, but it was a good idea and it almost worked. Uh, you see getting in closer and closer. Kong opening up the space now, but soon she's going to get pinned on her back line. I have, we have not seen a lot of straight attacks from Kong uh, because things like that happen. Um, so, so it's good pressure from Riti to pin her on the back line. And being able to, to get back fast doesn't matter if you have no back to go to. Ooh, good long attack from Ritsi there. 11-9 and uh, Kong's got to start changing things up now. Uh, Ritsi's found the way around around her really good, really good defensive uh, counterattacks. A lot of scoring issues going on apparently. Possibly they didn't add it for Kong either and they didn't add it again at the break. Like they added it for Ritsi at the break but not for Kong. Wow, okay, so apparently they did not add a touch for the P-Red to either fencer. At the end of the second break, they added a touch for Ritsi and not Kong, and now Kong is still down a point. There is a scorekeeper. Um, as Ritsi finds her, her not tying touch, Ritsi finds uh, her 13th touch but Kong should be at 14, I think. We're gonna have to go and watch it again. And nobody at the venue caught it. This is insane. This is the semis of a Grand Prix. Let's go find out what happened in the minute break. All right. Yeah, only added one for Rizzi. yellows two two with P yellows get a second passivity card here. Passivity cards for both stays two two rough awards the point is not given yeah and then she gets a score and then we're going from there okay so yeah Oh, we missed a touch. I thought we went to overtime. Oh, we did go to overtime. There's no break in overtime. My fault. Got so confused. Okay, here we go. Here you go, 13-13, priority to Ritzi. Uh, but this should be Kong's bout already. See what she can do. This is what they call an Olympic touch 
from Harmer Moog's book IFA 2.0, now it is 2.6. Uh, this is what you do with, at two at touches like this. You do your best action. If you know what your opponent's best action is, and you can deny them that, they'll have a huge advantage. Let's see if we can get a, one of that big commitment, fake commitment set from Kong. Oh, out of distance flash from Ritzi. Kong takes a 14-13. 